Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. And, and let, let me just say I, I, I find it incredible that um, some people want to blame the president, the same people who want smaller government and don't want the president to intervene uh, against private industry are the same ones who say that the president should intervene and uh, should somehow do something. Um, I think tonight we'll hear the president uh, saying uh, a lot of important things and we'll see that he is, is trying to do a, a, a great deal. Um, I, gentlemen, I, I want to um, read some quotes and ask you to comment on it that, that some of you uh, made. Mr. Tillerson, in 2006 you said, and I'm quoting, industry has developed the technologies and acquired the experience to produce these resources safely and with a minimal environmental Im footprint. Mr. Mulva, in 2009, you said, and I quote, our industry, our company, we believe that we have the capability and the experience that we can develop these resources and not in any way really compromise safety and environmental performance. In 2005, David O'Reilly, uh, who was then CEO of Chevron, told Congress that all of the offshore areas closed to oil drilling, quote, can be developed with minimal environmental impacts. And Mr. McKay, in 2009, you told Congress, and I quote, for those who continue to question the safety of offshore energy operations, I can only point to our record in the Gulf of Mexico. Gentlemen, if we can't believe what you said in those days, how can we believe anything you say now and anything you're going to say in the future? I mean, we, we were given assurances that everything would be fine. Uh, I know that accidents happen, but this is one hell of an accident. Um, why should we trust the industry to uh, give us assurances when those assurances apparently mean nothing? I don't know. Anybody have an answer to any of the quotes? Congressman, I stand by my statement with respect to ExxonMobil's performance. Do you believe that uh, industry has developed the technologies and acquired the experience to produce these resources safely and with a minimal environmental footprint? When the standards and the processes and the procedures that have been developed by the industry are followed, that has been the case. Well, how can we feel comfortable that, those that, that, that the processes and technologies will be followed? Obvi obviously, it wasn't followed here. You asking me or someone yeah, else? No, I, I, I'm asking you. We didn't have the problem. I can't answer that. Well, let me, let me ask Mr. McKay. Perhaps he can, he can answer that. The, the tragic accident that has happened here, I think, is going to have a combination of factors which are going to uh, be decisional uh, process and, and, and equipment. The investigations are exceptionally important to understand how that chronology works and what caused this accident. I do have confidence that we will understand what happened here. I do have strong confidence in that. I also believe that there will be improvements made because of those learnings such that the industry can get back to work. And I think that can happen pretty quickly. M M Mr. McKay, let, let me ask you this. What really infuriates the American people, what infuriates me, is after the accident, every single day it seemed that BP was trying another technique, uh, another method of trying to plug the hole. And each time it failed. It's mind-boggling for, for, for me or for, for anyone else to understand why there were not uh, safeguards in place, technologies in place, um, modes of operation in place, so that if a disaster happened, you would know, know immediately what to do. This, unfortunately, this particular incident occurred where the lower marine riser package did not disconnect from the blowout preventer, so we have a package on top of that preventer. We had 4,300 feet of riser off the top of that, kinked, and the, the access to that to be able to do anything from the top on that blowout preventer has been prevented. But that never uh, occurred to anyone beforehand that that might happen? Uh, not in that way. I don't think anyone could predict that. that. That package is supposed to release from that blowout preventer, and it has not. Well, doesn't this mean that oil drilling is inherently risky? There's risk, as, as was mentioned a few moments ago, there's risk in everything. But I do think the, the systems and the technology that, uh, that is available to the industry and will be improved through the learnings here the resources, the important resources here can be developed. Why are these disasters seeming to only happen in uh, the U.S.? We had the Exxon Valdez 
20 years ago, and now we have this. There's drilling all around the world in the North Sea, all over. We don't hear about uh, tragedies like this. Uh, are the oil companies in, 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 in the United States cutting corners? No, I would say, unfortunately, there are tragedies around the world. There, the, probably the worst rig disaster in history was in the North Sea. Um, so, unfortunately, these things happen around the world, and we have to improve from each and every one of them. And I think that's what the industry tries to do. Well, so does, doesn't it prove my point that oil drilling is inherently risky? There could always be a disaster? No, I don't think always. I think that the track record overall in the industry is very strong, but we have these we have issues like we've had this tragic accident that we've got to learn from. Well, I don't hear anybody saying drill baby drill anymore, and for good reason. I, I just think it's, it's just absolutely um, ridiculous uh, that uh, this could happen and that there's no uh, response that's uh, satisfactory. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.